Big thanks to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. DaVinci Resolve is a bit weird. There, I said it. But it is. For starters, there's a free version, which in and itself makes DaVinci Resolve kind of weird. But it's also a bit weird in a few other ways. So, here they are. Here's some of the simple things which can be a little bit confusing because they're a little bit different in DaVinci Resolve. And we're going to start off with databases, although they've recently changed the name. They're not called databases now, they're called libraries. But essentially, DaVinci Resolve uses a library file to store all of your individual projects. It's not just one, you can have as many as you like, but you've got one big file which stores lots of different projects. So rather than having individual project files dotted around, they're all stored in one database or library. Now, when you first open DaVinci Resolve, this is the screen you'll see. This is your project manager. You've got your libraries on the left-hand side and the individual projects over here on the right-hand side. Quick tip, within the projects, you can right-click and add a new folder just to organize your projects that little bit more if you want to. Another quick tip, you can always get back to this same screen even within DaVinci Resolve by clicking on the little house icon in the bottom right-hand corner. Now, you can have as many of these project libraries as you wish. You simply click Add Project Library, bottom left, give it a name, choose the location, and then click Create. Now, these project libraries are actually quite small because they don't contain any media. It's just the actual project files themselves. So if you want to create a bunch to help you stay organized, go for it. Now, that doesn't mean that you can't get the individual projects out if you want to. All you need to do, select the project, just give it a single click so it's highlighted in red, and then simply click Export, choose your location, give it a name, hit Save, and that will export a DRP file. DRP stands for DaVinci Resolve Project File. Then you can import that file by simply clicking on Import, grabbing that DRP and opening it up. This allows you to really quickly share that file between different devices, send it to someone else and they can just import it into their version of Resolve. Now, as mentioned, that doesn't contain any of the actual media. If you want to package the entire project up, including the media, you can do that by simply exporting a DaVinci Resolve Project Archive instead. To do that, we simply right click on the project and then we go to Export Project Archive. Again, select the location, give it a name, and then we have these options. Now, I highly recommend that you only tick media files. If you include the render cache, it can become an absolutely ginormous, mega, huge file. So just go with the media files and then click on OK. That will export a DRA file, although it looks like a standard folder. But if we open it up, we've got the project file and all of the media files. Then on a different machine or a different version of Resolve or whatever, we simply grab this DRA, the top level folder, drop it onto the project manager, and that will restore the project and link all of the media. Dead easy, dead simple, dead quick. Now, an advantage of using these libraries, these databases, is you can really quickly back up every single one of your projects by simply backing up the library. You simply locate the database, click on this little I to open up the details, and then you back it up. Once backed up, you can move the database file to a different machine, or if you're rebuilding your own, restore the library and you'll be good to go. Or for a small fee, about five bucks a month, you can sign up to the DaVinci Resolve Cloud, which allows you to store your libraries, your databases, your projects within that cloud service, which means they're accessible from any device in the world that has an internet connection. I use it personally, it makes my life easier when I'm hopping between my desktop, my laptop, my iPad, whatever. Everything has access to the same projects and you're good to go. Next up, project settings. Within Resolve, click the little cog in the bottom right-hand corner within your project to open up your project settings. From here, you'll set things like your project frame rate and your project resolution. Now you'll see this is an empty project. I've got 4K, 30 frames per second. But once you start anything within the project, I've simply imported some media and created a timeline. If we open up our cog, our timeline frame rate becomes locked. The resolution doesn't, that's all good, but the timeline frame rate does. So if you're halfway through an edit and then realize that you didn't set your timeline frame rate correctly, it can give you a bit of a scare, but it's not actually as bad as it seems. You see the project timeline and frame rate within those project settings are just the defaults for the project. It doesn't mean they're actually set in stone. You can still create timelines that have a different resolution and a different frame rate within that project. So that's all you need to do. In this instance, I'm at 30 frames, let's say I actually needed to be at 24. What I'm gonna do, come out of this box, I'm gonna hit Control and N to create a new timeline. I'm gonna click this Use Project Settings, we'll untick that, and it gives us access to more controls. If we go to Format, 
I've got my timeline frame rate. And now I can change this to 24 and then click on OK. And now this timeline two is at 24 frames per second, even though we're working in a project which is technically 30. You can ignore the 30. It just means that anytime I create a brand new timeline and leave it as the standard settings, it's gonna come in at 30, but we can still work, we can still edit, and we can still deliver on a 24 frames per second timeline. If you are halfway through a project, open the timeline. We can just copy all of the media off that timeline, jump to the correct one with our correct frame rate, paste it in, and you're good to go. Boom, sorted. Now continuing with frame rate, this pop-up. Now quick note, you'll only ever see this pop-up when you first go into a project and then you first import any media. But what does it mean? Well, it's simply saying that the files that you've imported, the video that you've imported, are at a different frame rate to what you've set your project's settings frame rates to be. And it's asking you, do you want to keep the project frame rate as it is or change it to match the footage that you've imported? So what do you click? Well, it entirely depends on the footage that you're importing and what your intended use of that footage is. So as an example, I'm gonna set this project to be 24 frames per second. And we're just gonna hit save. Now I'm just gonna grab some footage, which I know is 30 frames per second. And we're gonna drop it into our media pool and we're gonna get our pop-up. Do we want to change the project frame rate? Two options, don't change and change. If we hit don't change, our timeline frame rate will remain at 24 and our footage will be imported at 30, which means we're gonna be dropping frames. If we hit change, which I'll do now to demonstrate, it's going to automatically change our timeline frame rate to 30 because our footage was 30. Now that's great. If I simply forgot to change my timeline settings, it's automatically fixed the issue because now our footage matches our timeline settings. Perfect. But if I wanted to actually play this back in slow motion, because let's say I'd filmed it at 30 or 60 so I could slow it down on a 24 frames per second timeline, that's no longer going to work because we're at 30 frames. So in that instance, 24 frames per second project, we're going to grab our footage, drop it in. Do I want to change the project? No, I don't. I want it to stay at 24. Our footage comes in at 30. If we just drop it on our timeline as is, it'll play with dropped frames because we'll be losing those six frames. Or alternatively, if we highlight them all within the media pool, right click, come down to clip attributes, and then video frame rate, we'll change this to be 24 to match our project timeline. Click on OK, drop them on, and now they're all gonna play back in slow motion to match our timeline. Hopefully that made sense. Let me know if it did. <laughs> i tell you what always makes sense though, Squarespace. If you're looking for a website that's professional, sleek, and easy to manage, Squarespace has got you covered. With Squarespace, you don't need any coding or design experience. You simply choose a template and then customize it to your liking. And with the new Fluid Engine, there's limitless customization. You can control every single detail down to the pixel, and it's as easy as dragging and dropping. Whether you're an artist looking to showcase your work, a small business owner looking to grow your online presence, or a full-time freelancer YouTube guy like I am. Squarespace has all the tools you need to succeed. There's online stores, marketing, and even now scheduling tools. So if you fancy checking out Squarespace for yourself, simply head over to squarespace.com right now to start your free trial. When you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com forward slash Mr. Alex Tech to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or a domain using the code Mr. Alex Tech at checkout. Simple. Next up, let's talk about proxies. They've actually made proxies much easier within DaVinci Resolve, providing you know where to look. You actually create the proxies now using a separate dedicated app called the Blackmagic Proxy Generator. And here it is. Now it is a separate app, so you need to find it within your start menu or within your applications or whatever and open it up. And it's actually really simple to use. So all we're going to do, we're going to click add to add a new folder. I'm just gonna pick this one and we'll hit select. Then we simply select the proxy format that we want, 8-bit, 420, half res or whatever. I'm gonna give that a click. And then we're gonna click start. And it will just go through that folder, selecting all the media within that folder and create proxies. It'll create a proxy folder and put the proxies within there so you always know 
where to find them and where they are. Within DaVinci Resolve, if you want to make sure you're using the proxies, you click on playback at the top and there's proxy handling and you could opt to prefer proxies. You can disable all the proxies or you can use the prefer camera originals. And that's it, it's as easy as that. You can just leave it going, it will create all the proxies so that they're available for you to use in Resolve. Next up, transitions or transition weirdness. This one catches everyone out, and I mean everyone out, at least once. You grab a transition from the effects library, you try and drop it on your edit point, and it won't work. You just won't have it. For whatever reason, it won't go onto your edit point. Ah! This is a strange one. It's been in Resolve forever. It's still quite annoying, but basically DaVinci Resolve needs additional footage or handles as they call it, which basically just means in simple terms, there needs to be an overlap. So in this example, this is the very beginning of this clip. You can see I can't actually drag it any further to the left because there's no additional footage. This one, the same thing, it's right at the end. Now, if there was an overlap like this, so let's trim this one down, trim this one down, now we can add our transition. But our transition can only be as long as there is overlap because it needs that overlap. Now, unfortunately, there's no way around that. It's just the way it is in DaVinci Resolve. It can be a little bit annoying, but there is a simple trick to make DaVinci Resolve do the trimming for you. All you do, click on the edit point on the timeline so that it's highlighted in red like so. Then from the effects library, simply right click and add two selected edit points and clips. And then it's gonna say, some of these clips have insufficient handles. Do we want to skip them or trim them? If we hit trim, it's automatically going to trim the clips and add our transition. Now, last but not least, we have the render queue. Rather than delivering one video at a time, DaVinci Resolve allows you to use a render pipeline or queuing system to render out projects. Now, initially, it can look a bit weird and a bit confusing because you've got this whole page just to deliver stuff. But it does mean you can bulk render, you can actually deliver videos from all of your projects in one big go, and you can even cut your timeline up into specific sections and then render them all out as individual videos. Let me show you roughly how all of that works. So here we are on the deliver page. Now previously, I've rendered out two jobs from this project. So you can see those within my render queue over here on the right. If I want to access all of the jobs from other projects, I simply click on the three little dots at the top right here, and then go to show all projects and we'll see all of my jobs within here. This is our previous render queue. Now, if I want to clear this, I can click the three little dots and I can go to clear rendered, which will obviously clear anything that's been successful or I can clear all. So I'm just gonna go to clear all for now. And now we have no jobs in our queue. Now, if I want to render multiple projects at once, let me just add this to my render queue. So now we have this job here. Let me hop into a different project and by default, we can't see anything at all, but if we click on the three dots, go to show all projects, I can see that render from that other project that's ready and waiting to go. So let's add this to the render queue, and now I can select them both and render all. So that's rendering out videos from two separate projects, but in one big queue. Now alternatively, what you can also do, on this timeline, if I use the I and O key, so I'm gonna mark an in, to say start at the very beginning, and then let's say I want up to about 30 seconds, we'll mark an O, so it's just marking that section on the timeline and I'm gonna go first 30, we'll add to the render queue and then we'll go from about here to about here. This is the middle, add to the render queue and it's gonna render out those specific sections from the timeline that we're working on. We can select as many as we want, hit render all and it's gonna chug through all of them individually so we can go put the kettle on and have a nice cup of tea while it renders out all of our projects. And there you go, some of the weirdness explained within DaVinci Resolve. Thanks for watching, hope it was useful. Make sure to check out Squarespace. See you next time, bye.